welcome back to My Own Worst Enemy. It's time to start turn number nine of the Battle of Pea Ridge, Cross by April. So I did not advance the game turn marker up yet. Uh, at the end of this turn, we will make a victory determination, and that will be basically for the Confederates. They'll have to hold two victory locations to win the game. It's not looking too good for the Confederates right now to do that, but we'll see. So all the chip markers go back into the cup. And, well, let's just go. Let's see what happens here. Lots of chips in the cup. We'll pull the first one, and we get, oh, the Confederate combat marker. That's not good for the Confederates at all. Sure that that would have been better to come out later. There is one place on the board that we can conduct combat, and that is up here. And... I'm looking, because I don't think they can even do an automatic retreat here. We've got them surrounded They're in the zone of control. That's what this Confederate, we learned the Confederate unit, or the Confederate, <laughs> the Cavalry unit. We've learned that the Cavalry unit is good for setting up these zone of control blockages for the uh, Confederates. And so, he has an attack strength of four, so you'd have to split that among, I just split that unit. You'd have to split that up among both of these stacks of Union. Because every, remember, every uh, enemy unit in his own control must be attacked, so I'd have to split the attack. So it would be two and two. So two to three here, and it would be two to eight there my goodness well i guess we we're being forced into combat here because we have this um nowhere to go so let's have uh let's go ahead and zoom in all right that's better um let's go ahead and have this brigade will attack this stack so two his morale is minus one we'll use the uh, the top unit for the union it's a plus one it is two to three it looks like one to two but again it's going to be um one to three because they are still in that wooded hex so it's one to three and let me get the dice tower back in view all right so remember plus one for the union minus one for the confederates so the confederates uh, roll a two minus one is one not good at all that is a complete miss the union rolls six plus one is seven on the defender combat results table <laughs> that is three r so that is three three steps and a mandatory retreat so now i'm, I'm confused now because I, uh, I'm splitting the attack here. Let me look at the rule book real quick. Because I had to split the attack in order to attack both of those units. And... I got a feeling I just wiped out the top unit there. Applying step losses. The first step loss must be applied to... Remaining step losses assigned any way the only player desires. So it doesn't really say... I mean, it does say that that you can have uh, units stacked in the same hex may make separate attacks against enemy units located in different hexes. And that's what the Confederates have done here. But it doesn't say anything about when you're applying the combat results. I mean, it says if you certainly apply the first loss to the, to the unit that you chose the morale to, remaining step losses can be assigned to his units in any way that the only player desires. So I, and combat results here are all simultaneous. So I'm thinking that and this unit i think was already this unit was already flipped i believe and then one under it was he already flipped as well it looks like he was uh yeah both these units were flipped so i'm pretty sure we just lost this unit um i'm going to put him off to the side here with um I'm going to grab a die, so I'm not too sure about the rule here. So we took three step losses in that stack, and like I said, even though they're attacking separately, I think that's going to apply to the entire stack. I think we're going to lose this unit no matter what happens here with this next combat result. Um, 
and so we go through with the uh, artillery unit that was attacking. So two to eight, and yeah, this is, and they're out in the open, but it's not going to matter because it's on the one to four column. And with their minus one, they're not going to do anything. The Union, with their plus one, well, let's just roll and see what we get. Basically, I think these units just got wiped out. So, yeah, five and five, nothing for the Confederates. But, again, the, um, the Union defender combat results just wiped out. So it doesn't really matter what happened here. It's still an interesting question, though, that how do you apply this step losses when you make separate attacks? I don't think it matters. I think they take the step losses. So... Both of those units get eliminated. Okay, well, <laughs> that was brutal. So let's go back out to the big map. All right, well, that's gonna be, that's gonna be, that's terrible news for the Confederates because now these units are all free to move back towards Elkhorn Tavern. Uh, I don't see how in the world they're gonna be able to uh, pull off a victory here. So let's see, well, there's still day two, I guess. I don't, I'm not sure what the conditions are there, probably the same thing. So there's no more combat for the Confederates that are possible. So let's pull another chit. And we get Price, the Missouri State Guard. Well, they're not going to give up Elkhorn Tavern. They're going to sit right there. So we're going to leave them there. And go back to the chit cup. And yeah, they want to hold at least the one victory location that we got. And it is the second division which I think are scattered out amongst these two areas. So we, here's one here, this artillery unit for sure wants to come up now. Uh, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three. So we could get to here. Let's do that. And then, are there any more yellow? Yep, so there's one under here. We're going to leave him there, though. We're not going to move him. And that's going to be it for the third division. And we pull the McCullough's division. That's down here. So we got a decision to make down here. I think we're going to move this stack back down to here. Uh, or do I want to do that? Hold on a second. This guy can go one, two, three. Oh. I think I can bring this unit forward now because there's no artillery here. could bring this unit up, this one over, and then this one down. Maybe that's what we do. So let's bring him this way. Um, this unit to here, and these two down. And that will do it for them. We'll draw another chit. And it is the first division, which was probably a good thing for the Union, because now they can, instead of getting clobbered here, they could bring these units down, or that one unit down. I don't, well, again, though, if you bring this artillery down, what was the rule for the Indian unit? To bring that artillery piece adjacent to the Indian unit, immediately attack one. Immediately eliminated when attacked by artillery. Yikes, even if it's, um, if it's alone, you don't even calculate the odds, it just gets eliminated. If the, are, if the Indians are stacked with another Confederate unit, eliminate that, eliminate the unit before determining initial combat odds. Oh, wait, it doesn't get, <laughs> get to participate in the initial combat odds for combat. It must conduct an automatic retreat if it's adjacent to Union artillery during the Confederate combat phase. Well, that's already passed. If it can't conduct an automatic retreat, it is automatically eliminated. I think we're going to bring this artillery unit down. 
wreak havoc with that brigade. All right, that's what we'll do for the first division. Let's pull another chip. And we get the independent. So I want to start working this cavalry unit back around because I'm liking how that works now. So two, four, five, six. So that'll get him to here. And that is his movement because there's only one in I think there's only one independent left. There is. Pull another chip. The fourth division. Now we can start moving back on towards Elkhorn Tavern. So the artillery piece can move three. So we can go one, two, uh, two and a half. Let's just bring him up to there. And then this brigade can join him. And then over here, I'm just looking because there's another independent under there that I forgot about who should have moved. So let's go ahead and do that. One, two, or we could go one, two, two and a half, three. So let's bring him around this way. Um, and then the remaining fourth division unit, one, two, two and a half, three, three and a half. Actually, I'd rather get this unit forward. I really want to get both of them forward, I guess, though. One, two, two and a half, three. Yeah, let's move this one up to here, and that will be it for the fourth division. Draw another chit, and it is the, well, we've already pulled McCullough's division down, down at Lee Town there, so let's draw another chit. The third division. Third division. I think they're all down here still. I think we need to bring them forward out of this area now. Let's just bring them up to here. We got that line again in front of Lee Town, that defensive line. And then we'll leave this guy here in Lee Town. All right. That's good. We'll pull another chit. It is the right wing. That's those blue units. So there's one here. So one, two, three, four. Let's do that. One, two, three, four. This artillery can go one, two, three. One, two, three. All right. Back to the chip cup, and it is the Union Combat Marker. So the only place we could have combat is down here. So let's zoom in. All right. Um, so let's see, now we're at two plus two is four, and here we have five, that's 11. I could have these two units attack here, so that would be four, um, is that, I did say four, right? Yeah, so four, seven, eight, two, 11. That's a little bit better. We put them on the one to two or take them down to one to three. Hmm. I'm thinking that I could just attack with one stack. That way that the other stack doesn't have to retreat or move. If, they, if bad things go bad, which they probably will. So it's still two, it'd be um, four. It would be four to 11, which is horrible odds again. And then here we had this artillery that would be firing on this. Probably it basically destroyed this unit. So it would be one to nine. Again, horrible odds. Or I could automatic retreat and avoid the whole thing. 
let's start down here. Let's just have this artillery unit open fire on this stack. And let me get the, the um, special rules for this scenario again to make sure I'm reading this right. So special rules apply to the Indian unit. It may never voluntarily move or retreat, and we know that. It is immediately eliminated when attacked by artillery. If, the, if attacked while alone in a hex, uh, it just gets eliminated. They don't calculate anything, it says. But if they are stacked with another Confederate unit, eliminate the unit before determining the initial combat odds ratio for the combat. So basically, <laughs> it just wipes out this unit. So let's just go ahead and remove it from the game. That's the first thing we do. And now we calculate the combat odds. It's one to nine. He's in the forest, so it's, it's going to be the worst case scenario here for the Union. It's going to put him on the one to four column. And I will get the dice tower. Uh, where are we? We're down here. I'm trying to take it off the map. We don't want to do that. On the one to four column, plus one for the Union, minus one for the Confederates. Uh, what happened to their dice? Let's roll those again. Well, let's... Well, one got stuck in the tower. Let's just re-roll that. I don't know what happened. All right. Plus one for the Union, minus one for the Confederates. So two for the Union, four for the Confederates. A two on the one to four column for the attacker is nothing. Well, it's three, really, but still nothing. For the Confederates, a four minus one is a three. So a three on the one to four is a two R. Mm, brutal. So that's two-step loss and a mandatory retreat, which means basically this unit is eliminated. And now this unit can advance if it wants to. It does not, I don't think, so we're not going to, we won't do that. And then we have this other combat. I want to leave this stack alone, so I'm just going to have this stack attack this stack. Um, again, you have to declare automatic retreats before combat starts, so that's why I have to attack now. Well, that's still 11. Yeah, horrible combat odds again. <laughs> it's going to put him on that 1 to 4 column again, so bad things are going to happen here. It's going to be, uh, I think both of these are zero morale. They are. Yeah, we'll just leave it like that. All right, so zero, zero, no die modifications. Oops, we roll a one and a two. Well, those are, those are terrible rolls. So the Union hits nothing. The Confederates roll a two unmodified. A two is a two R result on the one to four column. So two R, wow, all right. So that's two step losses. Now I'm gonna distribute those. Well, the first one's gotta be on this unit, but I'm gonna distribute those equally among each of these units. So we'll just flip them. We will flip those. And they must retreat, so we're going to retreat back this way. And now they must conduct morale checks. So we'll start with that brigade first. Rolls a two, that's bad. He fails, so he's got to retreat again. We'll just have to retreat this way. And then artillery's got to do a morale check now. Hey, he's got to retreat, so we'll just bring him back this way. Things are looking dicey again around Lee Town. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and um, go back to the big map. All right, not so good, but we were kind of forced to attack because remember, every enemy in the zone of control must be attacked. That's why I did not attack with this stack. We left them there to help defend Lee Town. So, all right, well, that was the uh, Confederate, I mean, the uh, Union combat marker. Let's see what else is in here. I think it's a repeat. It is. So that brings us to the end of game turn number nine, which we check for victory conditions, and that's the special rules book. Special rules book for P Ridge. The victory conditions For the first day, at the end of game turn nine, determine if either player has won decisive victory. Confederate player wins a decisive victory if he controls any two objectives. The Union wins if he controls all three. Well, neither player has decisive victories here. So 
we are going to go into uh, nighttime and then we go right into day number two. So for the second day, it says at the end of game turn 15, it's at this point, it's going to be a level of victory. So for the Confederates to win, they've got to control at least one location. The Union wins a substantial victory if they still control all three or if they control all three. So. Well, it's looking possible that the Union might get to do that. I don't know. I don't think the Confederates can take two more. I don't think they can take one more. Who knows? This game, combat in this game is so odd. It's hard to say. What we will do is we will advance the game turn marker up to 11. I will put all of these chits back into the cup. Looks like the Union has one more uh, reinforcements reinforcement brigade scheduled to arrive which will be good so we're going to end it here i uh, hope you come back and watch uh, the second day as it begins here at pea ridge thank you for watching and consider liking and subscribing and i will see you back here for the uh, next turn